Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalaye Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha The following are the glories of Mohini Ikadashi from the Koma Purana. Sri Yudhisthira Maharaj said, O Lord Janardana, what is the name of of the Ikadashi, the eleventh day of the moon, that occurs during the light fortnight or the waxing moon, Shukla Paksha, of the month of Vaishaka, which corresponds to April or May. What is the process for observing it properly? Kindly narrate all these details to me. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna replied, O blessed son of Dharma, meaning religiosity and divine duty, what Vashishta Muni once told to Lord Ramachandra, I shall now describe to you. Please hear me attentively. So previously, Lord Ramachandra asked Vashishta Muni, O great sage, I would like to hear about the best of all fasting days, that day which destroys all kinds of sins and sorrows. I have suffered long enough in separation from my dear Sita, my wife Sita, and so I wish to hear from you about how my suffering can be ended. The sage Vasishta replied, O Lord Rama, O you whose intelligence is so keen, simply by remembering your name one can cross the ocean of the material world. You have questioned me in order to benefit all of humanity and fulfill everyone's desires. I shall now describe that day of fasting which purifies the whole world. O Rama, that day is known as Vaishaka Shukla Ikadashi, which falls on Dvadashi, the twelfth day of the moon instead of the eleventh. It removes all sins and is famous as Mohini Ikadashi. It uh, is good to know that Mohini uh, is an incarnation of the Lord uh, which took a female form to bewilder the demons but probably that will be mentioned here later on truly O oh dear Rama the merit of this Ikadashi frees the fortunate soul who observes it from the network of illusion therefore if you want to relieve your sufferings observe this auspicious Ikadashi perfectly for it removes all obstacles from one pass and relieves the greatest miseries from one's pass and relieves the greatest miseries kindly listen as I describe its glories because for one who even just hears about this auspicious Ikadashi the greatest sins are nullified on the banks of the holy Sarasvati river there was once a beautiful city named Badravati which was ruled by King Dutiman. O Rama, that steadfast, truthful and highly intelligent king was born in the dynasty of the moon, the Chandravamsa. In his kingdom was a merchant named Danapala, who possessed a great deal of wealth and food grains and money. He was also very pious. Danapala arranged for lakes to be dug sacrificial arenas to be erected and beautiful gardens to be cultivated for the benefit of all the citizens of Padravati. He was an excellent devotee of Lord Vishnu and had five sons named Sumana, Yutiman, Medavi, Sukriti and Drishta Buddhi. Unfortunately his son 
Drishtabuddhi always engaged in greatly sinful activities, such as sleeping with prostitutes and associating with similar degraded persons. He enjoyed illicit sex, gambling and many other varieties of acts aimed at gratifying the senses. He disrespected the demigods, the brahmins or priests, the forefathers and other elders of the community as well as his family's guests. The evil-hearted Drishtabuddhi spent up his father's wealth indiscriminately always feasting on untouchable foods and drinking alcohol to excess. One day, Dhanapala kicked Drishtabuddhi out of the house after he saw him walking along the road arm in arm with a known prostitute. From then on, all Drishtabuddhi's relatives were highly cri critical of him and distanced themselves from him as well. After he had sold all of his inherited ornaments and became destitute, the prostitute also abandoned him and insulted him because of his poverty. Drishtabuddhi was now full of anxiety and also hungry. He thought, what should I do? Where should I go? How can I maintain myself? He then began to steal. The king's constables arrested him. But when they learned who it was and that his father was the famous Dhanapala, they released him. He was caught and released in this way many times. But at last, sick of his arrogance and total disrespect for others and their poverty, the ill-mannered ill Drishtabuddhi was apprehended, handcuffed and then beaten. After, we whip him, after whipping him, the king's marshals warned him. O oh, evil-minded one, there is no place for you in this kingdom. However, Drishtabuddhi was freed from his tribulation by his father and immediately thereafter entered the dense forest. He wandered here and there, hungry and thirsty, suffering greatly. Eventually he began killing the jungle animals, the lions, deers, boars and even wolves for food. Always ready in his hand was his bow, always on his shoulder was his quiver full of arrows. He also killed many birds, such as chakoras, peacocks, kankas, doves and pigeons. He unhesitatingly slaughtered many special birds and animals to maintain his sinful way of life. The sinful results accumulating more and more each day. On account of his previous sins, he was now immersed in an ocean of great sin that was so relentless that it appeared that he could not get out. Drishtabuddhi was always miserable and anxious. But one day, during the months of Vaishaka, by the force of some of his past merit, past pious merit, he chanced upon the sacred ashram or shelter of Kondinyamuni. The great sage had just finished bathing in the Ganga river and water was dripping from him still. Drishtabuddhi had the great good fortune to touch some of those droplets of water that were falling from the great sage's wet clothing. Instantly Drishtabuddhi was freed from his ignorance and his sinful reactions were reduced. Offering his humble obeisance to to Kaundinyamuni, Drishtabuddhi prayed to him with joined palms. O oh great priest, please describe to me some of the atonement I may perform without too much endeavor. I have committed so many sins in my life, and these have now made me very poor. The great seer replied, O oh son, listen with great tension, for by hearing me your life will change and you will become free of all your remaining sins. In the light fortnight of this very month, Vaishaka, April, April, May, there occurs the sacred Mohini Ekadashi, which has the power to nullify sins as vast and weighty as Mount Sumeru, the world actual mountain. 
If you follow my advice and faithfully observe a fast on this Ekadashi, which is so dear to Lord Hari, you will be freed from all the sinful reactions of many, many births. Hearing these words with great joy, Drishtabuddhi promised to observe a fast on Mohini Ekadashi according to the sage's instructions and direction. O best of kings, O Ramachandra Bhagavan, O Supreme Lord, by, fast, by fasting completely on Mohini Ekadashi, the one sinful Drishtabuddhi, the prodigal son of the merchant Dhanapala, became sinless. Afterwards, he achieved a beautiful transcendental form, free at last of all obstacles, rode upon the carrier of Lord Vishnu, named Garuda, to the supreme spiritual abode of the Lord. O Ramachandra, the fast day of Omahini Kadashi removes the darkest illusory attachments to material existence. There is thus no better fast day in all the three worlds than this. Lord Sri Krishna concluded, And so, O Yudhisthira, there is no place of pilgrimage, no sacrifice and no charity that can bestow merit equal to even one sixteenth of the merit a faithful devotee of mine obtains by observing Mohini Ekadashi. And he who hears and studies the glories of Mohini Ekadashi achieves the merit of giving away one thousand cows in charity. So, here ends the description and it may be added that there should be no grains, no pulses on this day be eaten. There are also some more strict rules which are followed by many, but this is the saying, the main saying, no pulses, no grains. And then in the next morning the fast has to be broken with sanctified grains or pulses um, there, are there are special times for that so if you have any questions about uh, particularities you are most welcome as well as your comments may the om love be with you jai shri radhe shyam And there is also a footnote that may be interesting to consider here. If the holy day fast falls on Dvadashi, there is a special calculation of the moon phases, it is still called Ikadashi in the Vedic literature. Furthermore, in Garuda Purana 1, 125.6, Lord Brahma states to the sage Narada, O Brahmana, this fast should be observed when there is full Ekadashi. A mixture of Ekadashi and Dvadashi or a mixture of three, Ekadashi, Dvadashi and Trayodashi, meaning the 11th, the 12th and the 13th moon phase, but never on the day when there is a mixture of Dashami and Ekadashi, meaning the 10th and the 11th day of the moon phase. This is also upheld in the scripture called Hari Bhakti Vilas, the Vaishnava Smriti Shastra, and upheld by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Prabhupada in his Navadvip Panchika introduction. That is just a special note for those who know more about the calculations of these holy days. Jai Sri Radhe Shyam.